cleaning up, right? Isn't this this is the period where it's just kind of like you've got a basin of water and mm-hmm. in your room, and I mean that would be pretty hard to clean up. It would be. And then you'd have to get rid of the basin of water and then refill it so it doesn't also look suspicious. That's a lot of yeah, lots of clean up, not just a, like hopping in the shower. No, it wouldn't be a quick down and dirty thing. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't think. You no. know, I yeah, whoever did it must have done it quick, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that it was around that time that, of course, Bram started acting strange. Um, for one thing, uh, they were looking around for the, the bloody murder weapon, and they found it. They found an axe with blood and gore on it, you know, and, and, and pieces of hair and everything else. Did you, where'd they find it? They found it on deck. Just sitting on the deck? Yeah, it was like, well, it wasn't like, like right in the middle where everybody could see it, but it was, it was laying on deck somewhere. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not exactly. Did, did you ever find out precisely where it, it went? It wasn't. It just like yeah. it wasn't squirreled away in like a, a bucket of flour or something, right? No, it was like, no, not it at was, all. It was somewhere. It's probably next to the rail on something. I and guess. also, it wasn't thrown overboard on the night of the murder. No, no, it was. Right? It was thrown over the next day. But by by, by Brom. By Bram. Bram. Yeah. Or yeah. Brom. I should say it could. It could actually have been Brom. I'm calling him Bram. We'll, just we'll go with Bram. Bram. I'm gonna, I'm you're thinking of Stoker. Day. Yeah, that's why you're doing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with a name like Bram, he must be a killer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but yeah, well, he, they did find the axe. He found, he picks it up says, this is it. This must be the murder weapon. I'm going to get rid of it. And he throws it No, he, he says, should I get rid oh, of it? Oh, should I get rid of should it? Should I? Yeah. And again, this is one of those, those things where you could interpret it in multiple ways. It's, you know, should I get rid of it? Or should I get rid of it? I mean, he, it's, it just, he does all this weird stuff. Yeah. He's such a screwball. Well, I mean, uh, got to remember this is 1896 too. Yeah. I mean, I mean, fingerprints, fingerprinting wasn't really a thing and there was nothing to link him. It, it, it wouldn't have been any sort of smoking gun no. that would have linked him to the murder. But a lot of people have said that, you know, that's another incriminating piece of evidence against him. Well, I guess, yeah. Bram. And it's, I mean, it's, so it's worth reiterating, right? He goes, should I get rid of this? And then throws it over. Uh, yeah, he tosses it over. <laughs> And, I mean, I agree. I don't think it was particularly strong evidence against him. I mean, he there probably was very little linking, but... Did, yeah. did anybody record his statements immediately after that? He said, I better skip three times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, look at that. Wow. That. Uh, I, I, okay, but here's, here's the really dumb thing about chucking the axe overboard. Is ships at this time, in this era... There were axes all over the place. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was a common tool because that's how you fix the ship and fixed rigging and cut rigging and got rid of stuff. So it's not like that was the only axe around. Mm-hmm. So I've seen it in some of the writing that he threw the axe away so that the killer couldn't get the oh, rest of them. I guess I would have thought more it was like a superstitious thing in the same way that like, you know, if the murder weapon is still there, the ghost of the murder murdered people are going to come and haunt in other cases maybe. resolved. Similarly, like, I know we're about to talk about the fact that he tried to throw the bodies overboard. Yeah. Uh, well, he suggested up. it. He didn't actually physically try. No, I know, he, but... Yeah. And even then, I think, you know, to me, that kind of speaks of somebody who's, like, super superstitious. And, and sailors famous. back in those days had Often a reputation were. Uh, yeah. for yeah. superstition. Yeah. Yeah, and so it, you know, could have been as simple as the ghosts of these humans are going to come haunt us if we don't just get rid of all this stuff. Uh, that could have been it, or it could have just been, like, you know, sailors are all about, well, this means bad luck, that means bad yeah. luck. I mean, if it was I sailors, mean, I mean, I, how do they get through a day? Because so many things for sailors mean bad luck. Yeah. Well, know? I mean, one of them is a woman on board, usually. Oh. So. I actually wondered about that. I mean, we are a bit farther in time where it's not such a, a, a hard and fast rule, but still, mm-hmm. you yeah. got to wonder yeah. if there wasn't chatter on yeah. the boat. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there was. And actually, another superstition, apparently, that I've heard anyway, um, was that leaving port on a Friday is also bad luck. And they, and they left, left on a on Friday. Friday. They had a lot of bad and luck. And they yeah. left on the 3rd of July, which means they didn't get to see the fireworks the next day. That's a good point, mm. too. Oh, that yeah. was a really dumb move. I don't yeah. think that's a thing. But so, okay, so I kind of foiled this, but he then tries to throw the bodies overboard, right? Uh, yeah. Um, Wants to. Yeah, after the entire crew had been assembled and informed of what had happened, uh, and they're going, well, what do we do next? And the and first thing he says, well, let's, let's store the bodies overboard. and uh, let's, Burial at sea. Yeah, that, and let's clean up this mess. And, and actually, that's not a totally done thing, because when you're days out and bodies are They're going to get gross. Oh, they're not just going to get gross. They're going to get dangerous. Yes. I mean, yeah. And um, all of their 
vo- I mean, all of their f- fluids and oh, yeah. everything all around. I mean, similarly with the axe, right? That's yeah. going to get dangerous more than just it being a weapon. Oh, it's got the stuff axe could, all over the it. Axe, yeah, the axe could be washed off, though, at least. Yeah. It could, but yeah. if you've got more, why not just... Why not just pitch it? Yeah. yeah that makes Because, I mean, it could be washed off, but probably not really to, like, a medical satisfaction. Mm, though yeah. that was probably not the concern. I they, mean, they didn't know about stuff It's like not the that. worst idea to toss these things overboard. These things, no. ooh, the bodies. I would be, I would be fine things. to pitch them. Yeah. I don't like having dead bodies around, personally. Yeah, me neither. I get rid of them. Yeah, I know you yeah, do. Yeah, uh-huh. And Henry Slice, I think, was the guy who pointed this out, that uh, the bodies uh, were evidence. And Bram also thought we, they, they should clean up the huge bloody mess below decks. And, uh, which is, you know, again, I could sort of see that. Maybe he was a neat too. freak. But Slice also felt that the cleanup shouldn't happen because that's evidence down there. And so they put the bodies into the ship's jolly boat. Jolly boat being uh, the, the ship's tender. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that small little dinghy that, you know... That goes you back take, and forth to shore the shore. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So they had the jolly boat. This, in this case, it was hanging on the side of the ship. I think on the starboard side, about amidships. And so they put the bodies in there where they just sort of, like, you know, festered. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then they had, to decide, they had to decide where to go because, again, they're in the middle of nowhere. Bram suggested, again, another strike against him. He said they should continue on to South America, to French Guiana, which was kind of like where that direction they were heading. That was about 1,500 miles away. And again, as I said before, they were about 400 miles south of Bermuda. Uh, So that puts them about 1,100 miles from Boston, where they sailed out of, and about 1,100 miles from Newfoundland and and Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia? Yeah, and so apparently the crew decided to head straight north to to Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. I don't understand that. That is so strange to me that you just do an about face and go almost all the way back home instead of just yeah. hanging a right hand turn and going to a place that's super close. Yeah, I was wondering about that too. At the very least, you know, if they were going to go back north, the winds were favorable for going north, but Boston, the city they came from, was also 1,100 miles away. Was about the same distance yeah. and, and also pretty much north, you know, mm-hmm. so the winds were, the, you know, I don't know why I they really... didn't shoot for Boston. I don't get that. Or like you say, why not shoot for uh, somewhere further south on the east coast. The which more I think closer. about this, the more I bet that the captain and the second mate were the only ones who knew how to navigate well. Maybe because that suddenly was I it. just I was like, I just suddenly wondered, wait, if we're just going to head north and we'll find one of those places eventually. We know that we'll run into happen. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I I agree. I think it's weird that they didn't just like go to Boston. Isn't as weird that they didn't just hang a right and go for land just because you don't. You know, this is kind of a time where you you're probably not totally certain about the government or the settlements that you might. Well, get. this is 1896. I mean, if you if, if they had turned and gone like not due west, well, probably not. You don't. But if they had gone like northwest, mm-hmm. then they would have hit like well, whatever Carolina. Yeah, that's you true. Know, I mean, uh, in Florida. That's true. Even, yeah, they weren't that far south. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so I mean, I just you know, it, mostly I think you wouldn't you wouldn't want to be landing on necessarily on like you know the Bahamas or like some kind of K in Bermuda. Yeah, Dominica, Dominican Republic. Yeah, that's you know, not necessarily like that. at that time the sort of place. But yeah, Florida or the Carolinas or anything. yeah, I mean all of those things. You're probably right. Probably nobody else knew. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm guessing that Bram knew we're pointed in the right direction. If we just keep going, we'll hit South America and we can finish this trip. So it's a bat. Yeah. It's a a pretty big strike against him that he, he oh, said, a lot let's of go this really far place away. Well, what the um, what the prosecution said later at his trial was that, well, of course he wanted to go sail on because his plan, his secret covert plan was to... Disappear. Uh, yeah, well his, well, his plan was to murder everybody else on the ship mm-hmm. as, they, as they sailed south, and then he could just sell the cargo in the ship and just disappear or whatever. Yeah. Um, Although, again, if you're bad in a crisis, I guess you can kind of... I could a little bit get into his head and think, yeah, let's keep going south towards our destination because I, we have all this cargo and it's going to be big trouble if we don't arrive with this cargo on time. Mm-hmm. So is we'll, we'll just go that way and we're just going to, you know, like, just keep going that way. I don't think it's a good thought process, but no, I can a little bit get it yeah. if that was his thought process, but I don't think it was. Mm, yeah, I I don't know. The, the whole thing is just a, it's, this is a weird little story. Uh, every, you know, I mean, Bram was not the only one who acted oddly. I think. They all no, not one. at all. Yeah. He's just got the most attention. Yeah, yeah. he did. He did. Uh, well, what's what's another strike against him? He came up with a theory about the murders. Mm. 
Yeah, he well, he's a great armchair detective. Mm. Yeah, I know, I know. But so he said he told he told this to monks, I believe, Lester monks. Uh, he said that uh, Blomberg, the second mate, uh, had that was this was his theory. Had tried to rape Mrs. Nash, who screamed, which caused Captain Nash to come running uh, to save the day. Blom- so Blomberg murdered both of them with an axe. But in the fight, well, he was mortally wounded himself, and then he crawled back to his cabin before he expired. So that was that I... was supposedly Bram's theory about the murder. So why wasn't the captain in the same room as his wife? Well, he crawled off to the chart room to die. Oh. oh. Yeah, and that's they all why crawled those... off to their respective rooms. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. that's why there was that really giant trail of blood, right? Yeah, exactly. Except, no. Well, no, he crawled to his stateroom. He got some He got some like rags and came back and cleaned up the mm. mess. And, and then, then crawled, crawled back, and yeah. cleaned up behind yeah, him. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, it. okay. Yeah, obviously it's, it's, an absurd, it's, crazy. it's an absurd theory, but... Uh, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe he had been drinking, but actually, but that was considered a strike against him because it looked like he was trying to shift the blame onto Blomberg, who couldn't, who was dead and couldn't defend yeah. his name. Although it, could, it should also be noted that uh, a lot of this stuff came from Lester Monks, uh, who wrote a lot of this stuff down. So there's, I guess, that's one thing that people should take into consideration. He who writes history can shape it however he oh, wants. Totally. And so uh-huh, it's, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it could be that he was the one who did it all, and then he just wrote the accounts down however he wanted them to be. Uh, you never so know. he was the completely innocent guy. Yeah. You never know. I've uh, sort of wondered about old Lester Monks, but we'll talk about that in yeah, the series. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he, but also, as I, as I said, he wrote it down, and then Monks also claimed that Bram suggested at one point that they should tear up his account that he'd written down. <laughs> well. Yeah. And uh, and Monks refused to do that, so that doesn't look good for Bram. If they, if he actually said that, and he probably read unless, what, he well, read what was being written about. Well, it, like, unless Monks nice. was totally misrepresenting it, and yeah. he was like, "That's total bunk. What are you doing?" Maybe and Monks he, was maybe like, he read it and thought, it, yeah, that he yeah. could have read it and thought it was like, yeah, like I say, dishonest. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, still, at this time, nobody was totally sure who was guilty of the murders, so it was a paranoid time. Uh, it took him six days to make landfall. And nobody wanted to go below deck, uh, <laughs> especially alone. So everybody was sleeping on deck and just spending all their time on deck. Surprise, surprise. Uh, which turned out to be even less fun than you would think because there was this bad smell coming out of the jolly boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. random, weird, yeah, I mean, totally mysterious what's, smell. What's causing that, I wonder, that idea to lower the boat and tow it behind the ship? Well, this was probably a lifesaver because yeah. this is July. It's, even in the mid-Atlantic, yeah. it's going to be warm, mm-hmm. uh, if not hot. I could imagine those bodies were pretty ripe. Uh, what else happened during this time? Well, Charlie Brown got busted. Remember him, the Swedish guy who was named Charlie Brown for what reason? That nobody knows. His sweater. Yeah, that's yeah. He, His uh, haircut. Yeah, he was caught uh, throwing a pair of bloody pants over the rail. To which he said, "Oh, brother." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Charlie. Uh, Charlie got tossed into manacles and locked into a cabin because he was now the prime suspect. Yeah, although he claimed that he had just gotten them bloody from dragging the bodies up from below decks and putting them in the jolly boat, mm-hmm. which is entirely possible. It yeah. is. Yeah. If he was one of the people who helped with that. Yeah, and but uh, yeah, but throwing them overboard, though, that looks guilty as hell. But then after Charlie was locked up in his cabin for a little while, he, he finally he, he revealed that he had seen something on the night of the murders. Remember, he was steering the boat, and there was that little, that little small window into the chart room. Mm-hmm. Well, he said that when he was steering the ship during those wee hours of the, of the morning, he saw the murders taking place. He suddenly remembered. He suddenly remembered hmm. that he saw the... Conveniently. Uh, I know, he saw, that he saw Bram murdering the captain. He said he also heard Mrs. Nash scream. Uh, and then he said that he saw Bram come up on deck afterwards carrying something, which was probably an axe, but it was dark out, so we couldn't tell for sure. So that was his story, uh, and so the crew grabbed Bram and they chained him to a mast, and apparently he stayed there uh, until the ship got to Halifax, Nova Scotia. That was on July 21st. So I don't a know. Week exactly. later. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure they chained him to the mast on July like 14th or something. Oh yeah, I, mean, yeah, I was just talking about the, the duration of yeah. towing the dead bodies. Oh yeah, yeah, the whole yeah the dead body thing, yeah. So he, you know, it sounds like Bram spent at least a few days lashed to the mast, maybe several. That uh, could have been fun. Yeah, that must have been a great time. Yeah, and I think somebody wrote a book about this actually. I think I, you know, and uh, but uh, and that book actually played a small role. It was sort of a novelized. Yeah, it was account. totally a fictionalized version. Yeah, but it did play a role later on, a slight role. 
which I'll mention. But uh, when they got to Nova Scotia, the entire crew was arrested and locked up, so the police could sort of sort things out. Uh-huh. Eventually, well, they were shipped back to the U.S. Well, I was going to say they they were all locked up because the the U.S. because it was a U.S. ship had to do the investigation, mm-hmm. and so you know the uh, it, Nova Scotia was like, we're not even going to screw around with this. You're all getting in irons. Have uh, fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's that fine. doesn't happen anymore. No, never. Uh, never. No, I mean, yeah. literally, the, the U.S. doesn't tend to investigate things that happen on ships that are... Not yet. Not. Right. We saw that with the Rebecca Coriam. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the U.S. wasn't all that interested. High seas. That's why I do all my murdering in the high seas. Uh, where were we, though? Oh, back in the U.S., they were, of course, uh, intensely investigated by the police. And the detective sat Bram down, of course. He was a prime suspect because of what Charlie Brown had said about seeing him murder the captain. Mm-hmm. So the police sets him down and, and says to him, well, Charlie Brown has testified he saw you murder the captain in the chart room through that window from the steering station. To which uh, Bram said, quote, he could not have seen me. Where was he? Unquote. Mm. Which was taken as a slip of the tongue. It's kind of like saying, well, you could not have seen me killing the captain in my red coat because I was wearing my black coat. Ha ha! Yeah, ha ha. He's wrong. I, but I, I don't know. I, I, so that was taken as an, as an incriminating statement. Like he was saying, you could not have seen me killing the captain because I was careful to be out of sight when I but did it. And, he and could have also been saying... He couldn't have seen me because I didn't do it. Well, yeah. that or, you know, there's the whole statement that he saw him walking out of the uh, the cabin area on deck. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he might have, have gone not forward where the wheel was, he, but he might have headed towards the rear of the ship from his own cabin. Because his... Because his room is actually directly across from the second mate's. Yeah. So he could have popped out the back entrance, unawares of what had happened, and he's like, "How could he have seen me? I was on the other side of the of that entire area." Uh-huh. I mean, like that could be what he was trying to say. It, it could have been, or, or yeah, I mean, I, it's hard to say, but uh, it, it's certainly not an incriminating thing. But all the various actions and statements of, of, from Bram were put in front of a jury by the prosecution. Uh, these included, well, of course, as I mentioned, he found a murder weapon, threw it overboard. Uh, he had tried to pin the blame on Blomberg with his murder theory. He later tried to blame Charlie Brown. Uh, there, well, he did have bloody pants. He yeah. did have the bloody pants, yeah. He also supposedly asked monks to destroy his written account. Because it put him in an unfavorable light. Yeah, and then Spencer the Stewart uh, testified that Bram had railed about Captain Nash and uh, second mate Blomberg earlier in the voyage, and that he'd also said something to the effect that he wanted to have sex with Mrs. Nash. Mm-hmm. Does, uh, does that sound at all out of character of what you would expect to come out of the mouth of a grumpy sailor at that really day can. and age. Yeah. I hate that guy. I hate that guy. I want to sleep with that lady. Well, yeah, I know. Because I mean, this, this, is, this is not sound unusual. I, would, no. I wouldn't not expect that. Let's not forget what the paper said about Mrs. Nash. She was well endowed. Yes. So I'm sure that uh, he was not the only one on the ship, really. That's got to be kind of a weird thing to be the captain and know that every single guy in the crew is just lusting after your wife. Yeah. Yeah, weird. That, well, that's a power dynamic, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, it's not like he didn't expect that. Yeah. Yeah, he, he knew what to, they were getting into. Yeah. Yeah, I had to have known about it. Maybe he enjoyed it. It's like, ha ha, can't have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, well, when you were on your cruise ship, you were the only woman, right? <laughs> no. Well, okay. <laughs> Never mind. No. Uh, what else? The prosecution, as I said, uh, they made the point that he wanted that longer trip to Prince Guiana so he could murder everybody and throw their bodies overboard and stuff, which is kind of an amazing theory because there's no evidence of that. He, maybe he did intend to do that, but I think the prosecution had a little more a little more flexibility in those days to put forward you know, ludicrous theories. But they also brought in some older acquaintances. Joe, Joe, wait, yeah. come on. The prosecution yeah. never does that. They never, they never. Then or it. now. Yeah. No. Oh, they still do it, yeah. <laughs> but there, well, think, there was no forensic there. files to come in later and prove the case. So. True. Yeah. I think that they All were. All the footage was lost. Yeah, I think they were a little more careless back in those days. Although there's still plenty of that going on today. Yeah, they played a little fast and loose, that's for sure. Uh, they also found some older, they, they really dug up all the dirt they could find on him. They found a guy who had sailed with Bram on a ship called the White Wings, who said that Bram had told him or suggested him that they should kill the captain, take the ship, sell the ship and the cargo. Uh, apparently he told this same sailor, I think this guy's name was Nicholas, uh, also the same guy that he had been aboard a ship called the Twilight, and he had scuttled the ship. He delivered the cargo, collected the money, 
scuttled the ship and then told the owners that, well, the, I'm sorry, the money went down with the ship. It was all I could do to get to the lifeboat. Sorry, sorry, dude, but he kept them. He, mm. he confessed this to this Nicholas guy. Mm. That leads me to think that Bram had a big mouth. Uh, they had other witnesses. I won't list them all. Yeah, he, people, well, I mean, it's, it's obvious that he wasn't afraid to just talk in front of other people based on the statements he made about the captain and the second maid and the captain's wife. Yeah, but yeah. whether or not that other was story. true. Yeah, I don't know. He might, have say, he might have said, I want to kill, and then the, the name of all every other guy on the crew came out of his mouth. I mean, there's some people who just wander around going, oh, I'm just going to kill that guy, because yeah, they're, they're frustrated with him. Could be it as simple as that. Doesn't necessarily mean much, yeah. No, no. Yeah, I, you know, so, I, I never do that at all. But again, I wasn't there. I didn't. Wasn't, I could not observe his demeanor or yeah. anything like that. He might have been a really, a really... He might have been a real scumbag, which yeah. still doesn't mean he did it, but at least it makes it a little more credible. It's hard to tell. I, I, the only thing I know about Bram is uh, what I've read about him a little bit, and I've seen one photograph of him. He looks like, well, right, he doesn't look like a scumbag. Have you seen the drawing of him? No. Oh, it's hilarious because yeah. it looks nothing like his photo. Was oh, it, is it like a newspaper thing for the trial? Yeah, really? because in his photo, he's got a hairline similar to mine. You know? uh-huh. it's, it's very high, and he's got the bald spot in the back, and no facial hair. Or um, And then you see the drawing of him, and he's got what looks like a full quaff of hair, and the, the mustache, the big mustache of the time. And first I was like, that's weird way and i started comparing them that's when i realized like i really think that somebody on the internet mislabeled something and it has just been <laughs> just spread everywhere oh yeah that's never happened huh no, yeah. <laughs> that's that's got to be it i guess even back in those days they didn't take that much artistic license i don't think not usually yeah but uh, back to our trial uh they put him on trial later that year was, they were quick about things in those they days. let charlie brown go pretty quick they really did they kind yeah. of they, they, what did they oh, i can't think of the terminology the, the wording that they used but essentially they they considered him a idiot uh-huh. Um, in terms of that was the you know is well he's a little mentally unsound and he's yeah. obviously not smart enough to pull this off like maybe we should take him to the sanitarium so he doesn't hurt himself kind of he's too dumb to mm. pull this off on uh-huh. his own mm-hmm. yeah yeah and that's that's one of the ways I get away with murder by the way I play dumb mm-hmm. yeah you're good at it oh yeah I'm good at murder yeah no <laughs> <laughs> all right screw y'all. Needless to say, Bram was convicted of murder because that's another thing. This happens today still. Is you know the juries are inclined to, and there's been a heinous crime. They, somebody's got to be guilty. Yeah. Right. Somebody's got to pay for it. Yeah. Unfortunately, that happened in this case, I think. But uh, the trial was uh, set aside in the technicality, and so he got retried. He was convicted again. Uh, and uh, by the way, on oh, the first trial, he was sentenced to hang. Yep. And. Uh, he, Go to the good old gallows. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he never actually did get strung up. He served, I think, about 15 years in prison. And as I said, uh, there was a woman who wrote a, a book about this, which was apparently read by none other than Teddy Roosevelt. Remember him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That and, president guy? Yeah. yeah and, and Teddy uh, was not president at the time, but apparently he uh, was sort of, sort of taken with the case of, of Thomas Bram and... Uh, Took it up with President Woodrow Wilson and got Wilson to pardon him. Wow. So he got a pardon from Wilson and got In out of jail. 21? Or, no. Uh, no. It would have been like, oh, God, I don't remember the year he actually got busted out of jail. but uh, 96, 06. Didn't Wilson get elected in 1913? Uh, no, it would have been an even year. No, um, he was... He was the 28th president. He was office from March 4th, 1913 to March 4th, 1921. Right. Okay. So okay. He, was, he was elected in 1912. All right. Yeah. And then, so so yeah. the murders happened in 96. So we go 06 to 11. Well, yeah. God, how long? That's really... Wow. The, 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 time, the, the years on this one don't add up for the term he served. I guess his trial took several years. Yeah, I assume that I, you know, the 15 years that I've read about that he served in jail probably included the time he spent in jail during and between trials and all that stuff. Hmm. You know, so it could have been the whole accumulated, you know, time he spent behind bars. Well, it doesn't make sense. But anyway. That doesn't uh, make sense. He, he served some time. In, I mean, in fairness, I don't know where he served, but Woodrow Wilson was also the governor of New Jersey from 1911 to 1913. 
and governors can pardon prisoners. Yeah, but I'm not, sure Wilson uh, was president when it happened. No, it was, yeah, yeah, Wilson was president. I don't believe in it since the ship sailed out of Boston. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would have had any jurisdiction. I, I just didn't know where the trial was happening. I don't know mm. where any of that was happening. If it was Boston. I, yeah, or... I think it was Boston. Yeah. Okay, never mind. But that's, it's, that's mad. Those are minor We, we really details. went way off the, off the beaten yeah. path there, uh, all about Woodrow Wilson, which is pretty cool because nobody actually ever talks about Woodrow Wilson anymore. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, well, people should talk about Wilson. I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, <laughs> and we'll do that for another episode, though. But uh, as far as Bram goes, you know, he may very well have been the killer. I don't think the evidence was this positive in, in, in my mind but if it wasn't him let's assume for a second that it wasn't the well then who could it have been time for some theories maybe uh, but first nine other people yeah about that well not nine and one passengers, yeah. Well, no. minus him is nine. Minus minus the second mate. <laughs> minus the second mate. Oh yeah. Eight. Okay. Minus him makes it seven. So seven. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, uh, but before we get into our our theories and our suspects, let's take a quick Please tell break. me you're not going to show me an axe. Yeah. No. Oh, good idea. I'll show you my hatchet. <laughs> Compromise. You stare down at the pile in front of you and wonder what fiend created this meat and vegetable application of non-Euclidean geometry. Somehow, you are supposed to have known how to pick out the best ones at the store, which was mind-boggling. Then, you had to know the base formula for combining them as well as the proper order. How are you supposed to be able to do all this? Looking at all that stuff, I think what you're doing is less cooking and more alchemy. It doesn't have to be this way. HelloFresh is the meal kit delivery service that makes cooking more fun so you can focus on the whole experience, not just the final plate. HelloFresh delivers food to your doorstep in a recyclable, insulated box for free. HelloFresh is now offering light spring meals and has just introduced breakfast options. Because most of their recipes just take 30 minutes and require minimal equipment with six easy to master steps, HelloFresh will get you chopping, zesting, and cooking like a natural. We had sesame beef tacos the other night they are phenomenal, and I live with a chef. So, HelloFresh is offering a unique promo code SIDEWAYS30 for $30 off your first week of deliveries. So visit HelloFresh.com and enter SIDEWAYS30 when you subscribe. Delicious ingredients you'll love to eat. Simple recipes you love to cook. Get cooking. Stop alchemy. Okay, we're back after that fantastic commercial. Uh, and we're going to talk about our suspects. Yeah. So many good ones. So we've got, of course, Bram, uh, who was the, the guy who actually got convicted, mm -hmm. who really, I suppose, could have done it. My only problem with Bram as a suspect is that, um, well, so he murders, the, he murders the captain's wife. And, of course, Ray, and, and, uh, then um, Luster Monks wakes up. Of course, it takes him a moment or two to get his revolver and load it and everything. And then he leaves and goes fights the captain and goes up to the deck and finds Bram on deck. So Bram, Bram if, he, if he did actually murder the wife last, mm -hmm. and if he murdered the wife last, then would he have had enough time to change his clothes and clean himself up, get all the blood off him and everything, and then get up on deck and then for Lester Monk's to come up on deck to find him there. Would he have had enough time, do you think? No. Yeah. He may have. I mean, because we don't know how much time Monks actually spent with the captain when he first mm -hmm. found him. And how or much in the time wife's room, either. Yeah, or yeah. how much he spent time he spent with the captain's wife staring at her dead in the room. Usually, if I'm in a room with a chopped up, mangled body, I don't, I don't tarry. Okay, so here's the thing, though. I... I don't think that, for reasons I know we're going to talk about, that Monks was moving all that fast Maybe or not. coherently. And so I could see this taking several minutes. And let's just think, okay, so let's say Bram did it, and he's wearing a coat. Let's just say he's got some kind of big overcoat smock thing on. Uh -huh. So he walks out on deck. There's a bucket of water out there. So all he's got to do is take off his big jacket and scrub his hands and his face in a random dirty water bucket that is outside. Yeah. I suppose if he planned it really carefully, I mean, they actually have extra canvas for patching sails and stuff yeah. like that on ships. Mm -hmm. So well, so he could have made himself a, something. Yeah. But here's a question. is If he made himself a jacket that he then threw overboard, why didn't he also throw the axe overboard? Maybe well, that's he a good question. To. Maybe he screwed up. He could have literally dropped it. And when he... 
because I think he's the one who found the axe. Mm. He could have very he could have had that internal monologue of, "Oh crap, uh, that didn't go over with my my Kellen jacket. I gotta get rid of this thing. Should I get rid of this? Oh no, splish. Uh. But it could have been that. I don't I think, think that's it. I think he's just too easy of a. Yeah, it's kind of he's easy, the, he's the favorite. Crazy. Yeah, he's the favorite. You know, you, you might even think of him as a fall guy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in, in a way. So, okay, yeah, so Bram could have done it, um, you know. But let's look at a few other people. Of course, we've got Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown, he tells this really strange story about how he saw Bram murder the captain, but just, you know, didn't think to tell anybody about it. Because then somebody pulled the football out from him, and he, he fell uh, yeah, and exactly. on the ground. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, his story is like, and it could have just been, like, well, you know, after he got locked in the cabin and he's the chief suspect, he wanted to shift the blame onto anybody he possibly could, but still... You know, I mean, he, he he sees the captain being chopped to pieces, and then shortly after he hears the captain's wife screaming, and he just like bah, da, da, keeps steering the boat. I've got to make sure this boat doesn't go <laughs> off course. I know, there I know. There could be icebergs around. Yeah. yeah. And so even and then stays at his station, but then after he gets off his station at 2 a.m., he still doesn't go talk to anybody about He's like, it. Like, gotta yeah. go to sleep. Yeah. So um, it's so you know what you never see anywhere is he may be telling the truth. He may have seen who did it, but he may have been their lookout, or he may have decided that he could extort a little cash out of them by threatening to tell. Mm. So he sees, let's just say it's it's Bram, or uh, no, uh, let's say it's Slice, just because I like his name. Yeah. So he sees, he, he sees Slice doing the slicing and the chopping, and says, oh, I'm not going to say anything. And then later on, hey, Mr. Slice. Just so you know, I saw you doing some slicing. I saw you. I saw you doing some slicing, and uh, looks like Mr. Bram there threw the axe away. So I know you're not going to be able to use it on me, but uh, want me to keep my mouth shut? Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good or bad. Completely and, and plausible. Then, Except for that, on. you you even said yourself that there were other <laughs> ways to kill someone on that ship. I understand that, but he may have just you know what people people who commit who. Is commit blackmail the right way to say that? Yeah. Sure, it's a crime. You're committing okay. a crime. People who commit blackmail, they don't always. I mean, people see people killing other people and try to get cash out of them for it, never worrying that that person is going to actually do the same thing to them. So he may have decided, oh no, there's too much. There's too much activity. He won't come after me. Yeah, true. Well, maybe, but yeah, it happens so, on TV all the time. That's true. Yeah, yeah TV, but. The thing, about, the thing, the problem I have with the story too, though, is that from where the wheel was and the window and the captain's cot, so the captain essentially his legs would have been pointed aft towards the stern of the boat. In the front. Yeah, towards the stern. Yeah. So this is like. Uh, I'm looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like aft this way. Right, which is the front. Yeah. And uh, no, aft is four. There's, there's four and there's aft. So, so why is the wheel on? Uh, I thought the wheel would, was in front of this entire cabin structure so that he could see. Mm-hmm. Now, typically they had the wheel towards the back because that's as it's, it's, it's close to the rudder as possible. Mm-hmm. So in, on sailing ships, usually the wheel is in the back of the boat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so but anyway, the captain is, uh, from what the captain's legs would have been, and Henry Slice, when he was steering earlier, he said he saw the captain's legs mm-hmm. through the window, only his legs from the feet to the knees up. It's because they were cut off. Yeah, they were either, yeah, they could have been cut off, or it could have been that from that angle, his that's the only part of it you could see without actually yeah, it leaving like it. it a, yeah. yeah, without actually leaving his station and moving to the right and, 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 and peering being a peeping through the window. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, from that station, all I could see was from the knee on down. And now I can't imagine if I was gonna chop somebody who was sleeping laying down, if I was gonna chop them up with an axe. And remember, he was hit on the head. Yeah. If you were gonna approach somebody laying down to hit him on the head with an axe. Would you go around to the end, uh, to the end of where he's laying at, where his feet are, and chop from there, or would you stand next to him and chop? In other words, you wouldn't be anywhere close to the bottom no. of his body. You would be standing next to his, his head. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so, Bram, if he truly did this, he should have been out of sight entirely. Of Charlie yeah. Brown entirely. Unless Charlie Brown was unless leering Charlie through Brown, the window. Yeah. Unless he left his station and looked through that Which window. Which he could have, because I, I mean. I guess an argument of it being 